Commander Cockings and Captain Fildy here for another Trek Yards mission briefing. You all know it by now, it is the more relaxed discussion show. We take a look at any possible ship of the Trek universe, discuss it, work out its deep dark secrets, and then see what you guys think to help us with the full episode later down the road. And this week we have the best of the best, the sharpest batleth in the Klingon arsenal, the Neg Va class. Oh, look at that. At a length of 686 meters, this is a large and mighty vessel. And the Mirror Universe one is even larger and mightier, which is thought to be around 2,000 meters long. Wow. This is a very cool Klingon design and a wonderful progression in terms of Klingon aesthetics. And of course, we have the great Rick Sternbach to thank for it. So as you can expect, we will have an episode featuring this wonderful ship lined up for the future with the man himself. But until then, the next 20 minutes or so are going to have to tide you over. So let's begin. Kapla! All right, so the first picture, we have a great shot of it. On the top ish. That angle. And it really shows the beefiness. I love those warp engines. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, really interesting design to have that that okay, do you think that's four engines or just two with a separation line? In the sense of just that bit in between? Because I d I can't tell why why I think. I've wondered that myself, and I'm really I'm inclined to think it's four engines. Hmm. Or two really big badass engines. I don't know. Yeah, there's a scale difference between the two different engine pi uh, engines, possibly. But yeah, I love that. It really adds a lot of menace, you know, and, it, and it's a nice progression of the wing-tipped weapons because it gives that ah sense. And this this ship almost looks bird-like in a way, almost Romulan, if you will. Look at the wing detail on the kind of ties in the bird of prey to make it fit your theory that it's Klingon design. But anyway, yes, Klingon, trying to help you out. Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 a great ship. There's a lot of detail to it. I mean, you've always got to think these, you know, well, I guess Rick that designs all these new ships. How do they work out all these little little bits of detail? I mean, why add a a neck thing there, and why do that? I mean, it's so interesting. But yeah, it's, it's a great. It's freaking cool, man. <laughs> and the next picture is it kicking some serious ass. This is when I believe the Klingons attacked DS9, and well, actually they got blown up a hell of a lot because you know shields don't matter in that battle. Um, but yeah, it was that was uh, I don't. I think that was the first time we saw it, Way the Warrior, I believe, when Garon sort of comes in and he's like, ha I've got this massive new flagship. I'm gonna beat mm -hmm. you all. Um and although it doesn't have the doesn't have these but anyway, so yeah, so it's a pretty powerful ship and you can see in scale compared to the Vorchar, which we saw from uh from TNG is, you know, comparable mm, two thirds the size of a of a D, and this is obviously much, much bigger. It really doesn't put a shame, but this is the new bad boy of the Klingon fleet. And it's cool to see the Klingons actually come up with a new aesthetic of ships because they used the, their old classic design for so long. Uh, makes you wonder what happened. Maybe change in Chancellor. Or... See, if it's broke, don't fix it. Works, but for like three hundred years, it's old. Buy new. Now you're just being stubborn. You're not being. <laughs> you're not just sticking with what works. <laughs> but we theorized this about this in other episodes. I mean, it's yeah, it, it it's great to see a new Klingon ship, um, like you say. And the next picture is a good shot of the underside and the, those huge, are those guns? It's like disruptors cannons or what are those? Yes, yes. In the second version, they have these big beefy disruptor cannons on the bottom. Um, because those those interior greebly bits almost look like the original D7 engines. Hmm. So I, I, was, I was wondering whether they were like then supplemental there are engines. Disruptors, or? There are disruptors in the engine housings. Of the D7, that's yes. true. Yeah, this is from the Excalibur uh, game. So it's a, it's a, I think, mod turn game, and I'm looking forward to seeing it eventually. It's a space sim shooter. This is one of their models. I like that the uh, the impressive spikes on the bottom of the bridge. My model doesn't have that. I don't know if that's from the actual show or not. I don't think it is, but... Uh, it what purpose quite... would they serve? Well, they're navigational pods that help to deflect star matter and also utilize the uh, tricobalt deflection system to interfere with tachyon You're so radiation. full of targ poo. Just stop. Just stop. Maybe they're additional sensors or something. So the next picture is a great shot from the same the same 3D model, but you get a really interesting, um, much more lit up shot of these guns. Those look like guns now. Those are, yeah, nozzles. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly what I have as well. Um, yeah, they're huge. And with the, like you said, with the shape of... Well, they look like the original D7 engines, and you said that the disruptors were in the tips of those, which is true. So maybe they channel, these are just, you know how they channel stuff through the warp engines, the phasers on the refit? 
maybe the Klingons have the same type of thing. So this is basically a warp engine that doesn't act as a warp engine. It just enhances that weapon. Well, it's probably just like you say, just the housing, um, but they link it because that's so close to the warp engines that, that you could link it indirectly. Um, yeah, it's a good idea. Good idea. And it, that, that's a good place to put weapons, and they're pretty powerful from what we can see in the show. So they, they should have ones for, facing back, though, as well, I think. You need, you well, need the Klingons have never been an aft facing. Well, well they're never facing. running away, right? So. True. Although it's like the the Klingon bird of prey has an after pier launcher. Where does it fit? There's no physical space for it. So, you know. All right. So move on to the next picture, and this is of course them shooting a Cardi. The class. Oh, it's two Rick designs. Oh. <laughs> Rick versus Rick. Next the time newer Rick. Yeah. I like this. You can see the there's even more glowing elements to this. You've got the three impulse engines, which give it a pretty meaty. Pretty meaty. Uh, I think that'd be thrust. four impulse engines. Oh yeah, yeah, it's gonna be four, isn't it? Yeah. Confirm my model. Oh, I can't see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it looks like the now does that look like the two bottom disruptors are firing? Or does it look like one of the bottom disruptors and one is from the tip of the uh, front? That's a very good question. I was gonna say the bottom two, but now that you said that, it almost looks like you're right. It's one of the bottom cannons and one of the front, the front ones. Maybe the other one was damaged in a battle or something. Maybe because if we move on to the next picture. <laughs> well, hold on. Before before we do though, uh, I just love the uh, the bits in the middle of the engines. Those two red mm. plasma injection ports. I don't know. I think that's a nice little detail. And if they were if it's Federation, that's of course would be blue. But True. anyway, yeah, it's a nice segue into the next picture about the damage to the cannon. You got the Cardassians retaliating here and taking some shots at the ship. Three Hadekis, I think is how you pronounce it. Yeah. Yeah. Which are not really. Shouldn't be capable of destroying it, but whatever. Um, that that's some serious damage in that hole. That's probably going to interfere with warp drive and all that stuff. Or we... and you got a bird of prey there and stuff. But yeah, very cool. Cool. So the next picture is what we always love. It is a side through L cars. And first thing, first first thing, top this section. There's three bird of prey's there. Or theoretically, bird of prey. They've got the shape, probably a little bit Could be a oddly. Could, yeah, um, but given the six hundred meter length, you might be able to fit three of the maybe not burrells, but uh, the smaller bird of prey. Yeah, the burrell, the eighty-eight, eighty-eight meter one. Well, that that's would work because that'd still be that's still be like one eighth of the size, and those are clearly less than one eighth the size. So they're probably just the one below the burrell. Because oh, the one. little three, the three man one that we talked there about in go. Our Legends episode. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh. There's like shuttles. We never really see what Klingon shuttles. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a yeah. You see a lot of fun stuff. This one does have the front spike at the bottom, uh, including the very very large disruptor cannon at the front. Main deflector is below that. Okay, that makes sense. And they do have ass disruptors here, just uh, mm. around the warp engine placement there. And rotatory torpedo magazine. Ah. Rotor. What a rotor, yeah, which is which is right at the back. That's an interesting placement. That's cool. Can, okay. Yeah, that is neat. I didn't know that was there. Yeah, and this one I think uh, links to our theory of having two distinct warp engines because you can see there's two distinct basards, and rather than being halves, they look distinct. Um, mm -hmm. Possibly similar to the Valdor, how they got one set of, one set of warp engines to help. Uh, allow the ship to be cloaked and at warp. Perhaps again, the bottom set are for warp and still cloak, and the top set are for primary. Um, because again, this is this is the this is the flagship of the Klingon Empire, so it's going to be cloak able. It's going to be heavily armed, and you'd think that'd be part of the development cycle, wouldn't you? Oh, and they've also got disruptors, I believe, on the end of each tip of the wings. We can see sticking out. Although the details don't really represent that in my model, but it seems just bristling with weapons. <laughs> Um, yeah. And it shows the, the launch date, deployed in 2362, so that kind of puts it in perspective for you guys. It's a very, very new vessel. Probably one of the newest in uh, in Star Trek, actually. Think about it. Yeah. Right, so the next picture is a full-on orthos, all the views. Mm. And yeah, it does have that... It's like they, they took the uh, feathering detail from the Bird of Prey yep. and incorporated it into this design. So it does it's kind of weird though because the Romulans are the bird aesthetic really from TOS, you know. But <laughs> one thing I notice of this one hasn't got the point at the front, but on the warp engines it's got several points, or the uh, sorry the bottom cannons it's got several points in several places, which mine actually does have 
Um, it's fun to see. Just let's just put let's just put sharp jagged edges because you know Klingons. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, they look all, they look all slicey like the batlets, so you got to add yes. those to the ship design. Right? So one thing I notice, uh, and going back to one of your earlier points about the impulse engine, this is only got two impulse engines as far as I can see, two lit up with grill, uh, similar to where the, the the katingas are. But if you look at the top of the back, there's also these two pods, I guess, either side of the top uh, pod. I guess. Now they're not lit up and they haven't got grills, so they could not be impulse. They look more like torpedoes. But those are pretty big torpedo launchers then. Um, well, that's where the rotary turret was in the orthos, though. Well, the top, they, the, the top top bit was. The top top bit was. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. this is a little bit just underneath it. Okay, yeah. And then the shuttle bay doors are there, which, which actually makes sense. Interesting. Hmm. I love the uh, I love the angle of the warp engines. You didn't really get a sense of that. I think, well, actually, because in my one, the warp engines are exactly square. In this one, they're slightly curved, which I kind of like. It's interesting. Well, that's like the uh, Vorcha. That's the same angle the Vorcha engines mm. are, I think. It's fun. And from the front, even though it's well, it's actually very, very sleek, considering Klingon ships don't tend to feel sleek. Okay, it's the only angle it does, but the front is pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty good uh, view. Actually, if you look at the front, it's kind of reminiscent of the Bell Door from uh, the uh, Romulan design. Kind of uh, drawn out with the pods, although the pods aren't far enough over. But so you're saying the Bell Door nicked the design from the Neva? Okay, good. Yep. Because mm -hmm. you know Romulan steel Klingon designs. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oy vey. And it, let's move on so to the, the next, next one. This one is a very simple uh, drawn picture. Um, I believe uh, this is from FASA. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. So what is uh, so what was the Negva like in, in FASA then? I have no idea. I haven't really done any research on that. But <laughs> this is this is from the like na the FASA. We, we try, try to include a FASA drawing at least in every yeah. episode or every mission briefing. And this is... <sighs> The only thing I can say is that if you look at the relative proportions, again, you're comparing it to my model, which, you know, is is separate. The neck is thinner and longer in this one. In the facet, it's much thicker, and the points don't come out anywhere near as long on the tips. So it gives it a slightly different feel, a bit more robust, a bit more compact. And I really like this top view. I think it's a great, great look. So I don't know whether, whether I, which one I like more. So. So this is one of the problems with your love for faster and stuff at battles. You're always the Federation, you've said. So we ask you about the Klingons, like, I ah, didn't really play them. Yeah, well. So the next picture is a great cutaway view. And the first thing I notice is the Daughtercraft scout ship, which is that yes. top part. It's its own ship. Yes. That's this is freaking awesome. Because I think this is the first time they appeared uh, designed for, but they might have appeared in DS9 first. Canonic. Yes, yeah, so this is the... Uh, version of it as you say yeah the top bit was meant to be a separate craft i think to attack ships but also to separate that's um, neat yeah this is rick's original sketch with the main disruptor cannon point at the front and the point at the bottom of the uh of the of the uh primary hull which we saw in many of the other drawings well i like that it's got the if you look at the back phaser emitters yeah there's phaser uh, strips. some on the front too there yeah so it's uh it's got disruptors phasers and torpedoes and those little pointy things on the bottom are comm antennas. They're for communications. So it was half right. And it's cool to see the sensor strips on the side there. They got side facing sensors and cargo loading door in the neck. Interesting. I mean, it's, it's a much larger neck, so I'm sure it has multiple, multiple things. It's interesting. And the impulse intakes there uh, yeah. would imply to me that there's only two impulse engines, those two main ones, because mm. there's no impulse vents that I can see on the upper part there at all. Mm. Uh, I like that if you consider the Klingons as a culture, uh, look, if you look at the front of the, the, the primary bridge module, roughly, you got that main disruptor cannon, just above that the main torpedo launcher, and on either side of the of the of the of the head part phases. So that's a hell of a lot of weaponry just in the front bit. <laughs> it's like, hi, we're the Klingons. This is what this is what we represent. Weapons. <laughs> nice. nice. So the next picture is the first studio model that was used as saying all good things, and this has got the points both at the front and at the bottom of the primary. Um, yeah, it looks great. Interesting paint scheme, a bit more of a with Vorchar paint scheme, I believe, and um, the exact same colours to make it feel Klingony. Um, although in this version, the if you look at the back escape craft, it feels like it comes out a bit more than other pictures have represented. It feels a bit more away from the hull. Don't know if you feel the same. Yeah, I do actually. Um... Well, this is, you said this is the first studio model? Yes. So maybe they improved it later and just sunk it down to give it a more sleek feel, more compact and beefy. 
But I love again. I love the the red warp engines. They're such an interesting way of doing it. Yeah. Okay, so the next picture is another studio model uh, picture, and yeah, it's a different color green. It's a little darker. Yeah, this is the DS9 studio model, the modified because it was only it was only going to appear in one episode, I believe, the All Good Things, and then they were like, ah, oh, we need a new Klingon flagship. We have that ship from the parallel universe. Let's use that. Uh, and the main difference is being, uh, from what I recall, they've lost the initial disruptor bank at the front, and they've included these two um, big disruptor cannons there, which give it a different feel. And as you say, the colours now uh, an evolutionary green, more bird of prey-ish rather than the direct vorcha. Um, and I think that yeah, they've now added the red of the wings, whereas the previous version was just sleek, uh, sleek colours. Sorry. I didn't even notice on the last one that those disruptor cannons on the bottom weren't even there. That's why I, I just I just I just clicked back and took a look. And as you said, that daughter ship up there looks a little bit lower on this model too. Yeah, it looks like I've sliced a few layers off and then just stuck it back on. <laughs> yeah, but I do like that. I think I prefer this color scheme. I like how red it is. It really gives it a much much more aggressive feel. Um, yeah, it just does. Uh, so the next photo is another ortho. This is obviously the, the later version with a lot of red. Uh, and it has some information. Um, armaments, two Mark 18 Pulse Disruptor Cannons, 18 Mark 12 Disruptor Cannons, eight triple fire... Wow, triple fire photon torpedo tubes. We should, we should take that for the Federation. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Auto-modulating shield system, heavy uh, quantain... What does that say? Adranium titanium double hull. Plus 25 centimeters of high density armor. Wow. Although uh, cruising speed warp 8 and top speed warp 9.25. That's interesting because all the Federation ships of the era are always a 9.9 something. So we completely out, 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 out speed, I suppose, the Klingon flagship. That's surprising considering the size of those engines, to be honest. Well, maybe um, it, can, it can continue speeds longer um, than, mm -hmm. than Federation ships. Maybe that's the, the, the carry off. Perhaps, yeah. uh, let's move on to the next photo. Yep. And this is it attacking a uh, Federation shuttle. So this is probably its last appearance because this is its uh, end game appearance, which is the future future... Well, no, it's the, Vo it's the Voyager future where it's attacking the armored shuttle. Uh, and it's, as you can see, it's the configuration with the two lasers. But the point's back. So yep. it's a new ver version. I guess more heavily armed. I'm not sure where it's firing from, though, because it's it's far not doesn't like it's firing from the disruptor cannon of the front. No, it's kind of offset, isn't it? Maybe yeah. it's one of those phaser strips. We've got a massive disruptor there. I don't know. They weren't trying to destroy it, though, so I guess. But Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's probably nice. just one of the phaser strips. It's, it's one of the ships that I always felt it was just good to see it again because it was such an interesting design. Yeah, and I feel like we didn't get to see it enough, honestly. Yeah. So would have been fun, though, to see it in, um, if this had been developed earlier rather than the continuously re-updated Katinga. If this had been seen in Star Trek VI, you know, uh, next to the... Um, this Enterprise as a, as a flagship, as Gorkon's flagship, and just see the scales, it's like, oh. <laughs> you just stole my thunder, because I was just going to say, it'd be cool to see these in, like, a movie capacity. Like, Sorry, they did, like they did with the Katingas in the motion picture, they detailed them up, and I think to see this on the big screen would be amazing. Well, great minds, eh? Yeah, and fools seldom differ. So the next photo is one of those more foolish ones, as you just said. It's the Regent's flag well, Regent Wharf's flagship from the Mirror Universe episodes, where, as you can see, it's a tad bigger. Ridiculously big. <laughs> <laughs> look at that, look at the galore there. It's so tiny. And we know the galore is, is pretty, pretty big, really, considering this is this is one of those ludicrous things that you've got to take take as canon, but at the same time think, yeah, they just wanted to be cheap and just upscale it. Um yeah, and we actually included this picture in our Bird of Prey episode because yeah. the size is the Bird of Prey and we don't know what size that is. So, Although, you know, I, I said at the start of the show, this is meant to be 2,000 metres. That is, well, it's over three times a sovereign. And because it's not a sleek ship, the amount of bulk to build this, I mean, that's ludicrous. Although, you can imagine in a fight, this would be, well... Okay, we saw against the Terran Defiant, it was kind of crap. But I mean, in a, in a normal fight, without it being hero ship, this would be a serious adversary. I mean, this is this is this is the truest, as Khan said, you know, the truest um, expression of a Klingon warship times times three size. But I mean, this is this is oof. wow. Yeah, it's like almost like the, the Klingon dreadnought, if you will. Mm. 
uh, in Starfleet battles, there was a ship called the Klingon B-10, which had four warp nacelles, yes. which never got into production because of cost constraints, but that's a whole other episode in itself. Okay. But that kind of reminds me of that, especially with those disruptor turrets underneath. I know they're not engines, but they kind of look like the B-10. But this is one of those things where, it, like I say, it's canon, but you know they just upscaled it, and I think no one who understands Trek Universe is particularly happy about that. But at the same time, there's no reason to think that this same hull shape, just with completely different internals, couldn't work. You know, I mean, it's not the most unreasonable thing, but it was just an upscale for cheapness. And so we come to the last picture, a beautiful shot of it in warp, with a different coloured hull yet again. <laughs> but it's cool to see all the different variations. Yeah, it's close to the raw char, but yet with the red. Hmm. Yeah. And you can see a great shot of that front disruptor cannon, just the size of that thing. Yeah, I hadn't picture. noticed from the other ones, there is actually a uh, curvature difference with the bit just below it, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah I noticed that too, actually. <laughs> kind of gives it a different feel, actually. Yeah. So yeah. on that note, I am looking forward to the full episode about this when we talk to Rick. Because yes. he, he's been biting at the, at the bit to talk about this ship. He's told us a few times, so we need to get a, that episode film, Samuel. Yeah, he put quite a lot of thought into the Klingon ships, and I know yeah. some of the backstory of this ship, but uh, you know there's always more. Uh, so yeah, any last thoughts of the Klingon Nechva? Oh, just a very cool design and a great progression. I think Rick did a great job. And I think most of the questions we came up with in this episode, he will in fact be able to answer for us and make us very happy. Sounds great. So that is it for a very honourable episode of Mission Briefing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, as always, please like and subscribe to this channel, check out our weekly releases at trekyards.com, and join us on the Trek Yards Facebook group, where, well, we're all ship lovers, and you'd know that within five minutes of being on the, on, on the page. So come join us, join the conversation, and of course, guys, if you have a ship you want to see, put it in the comments below, because we will get to them all eventually. And that is it, guys. So until next time, this is uh, me and Stuart saying uh, bye, guys. Bye! <laughs>